In this video, I will tell you the number one thing that you need to have in order to achieve a reliable spiccato bow stroke that works consistently. People often ask me how to play off the string. I get questions like, what should my fingers be doing? Um, do I need some kind of special bow hold? Where does the motion come from? Does it come from the upper arm? Does it come from the wrist? Um, things like that. And I'm going to just tell you straight off the bat that playing spiccato, you know, even with the added element of height, because, you know, it's not like that attache where it stays on the string, even with the added element of height, playing a bow stroke like spiccato is usually less complicated than many of us make it out to be. And I used to ask myself these kind of questions also, especially when I was first learning how to play this technique. I did so much experimentation, and it's great to experiment, but what happened is I ended up overcomplicating things. And you know what happened? I ended up getting really stuck. Hey, this is Ina Langerman here with another video to help you along your musical journey. First of all, a big warm welcome to all the new folks here on this channel. I look forward to get to know a bunch of you. And before I share with you my number one tip for achieving a good spiccato, if you're a practice nerd like me, hit the thumbs up button below so that YouTube is more likely to share these kind of videos with you and with others in the future. Now let's dive deep. So quick backstory. When I was starting high school, I was suddenly thrown into the world of standard repertoire for the first time. So what ended up happening is I had to learn a lot of difficult music all at once. It was a little bit overwhelming, but I was also very excited. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being excited, having a lot of motivation to practice. Unfortunately, being introduced to so much difficult repertoire all at once resulted in a lot of tightness, especially in the bow hand for me. I skipped a lot of fundamental training in order to play this music. So my fingers, they weren't flexible at all. You know, they didn't, they weren't even able to do, I couldn't do that at all. They were very stiff and my thumb especially, it was so stiff. So when I came across my first piece of music with an off the string bow stroke, and I believe it was Rossini's William Tell Overture, I had a lot of trouble figuring out what to do. I ended up learning a lot by observing what others were doing, and I was trying a lot of things out, a lot of it by instinct. And you know, after a lot of practicing, I did get better, but I still ended up going through high school with a very stiff and uneven spiccato. Then later, when I went to college to study music, my amazing and very, very patient teacher in college, Daniel Phillips, he had me do a lot of exercises from the Dunis collection. Very powerful exercises. They taught me about flexibility in the fingers, how to have a softer bow grip without being too floppy, uh, how to have good control of the bow and have proper weight distribution when I was playing in different parts of the bow, and most importantly, how to develop an overall strong technique but with relaxation so it took me a couple years for things to finally click and come together but i graduated with a much stronger foundation than what i came in with and that's what ultimately led my spiccato to become really reliable and much more even so the number one thing to work on to achieve a good spiccato are in your fundamentals and sometimes it goes down to the most basic things. You know, when we are first learning how to play the violin, there's a reason that we are taught to curve our pinky and to curve our thumb. A special emphasis on the thumb here because you can have a pretty good bow hold, but if your thumb is stiff, so I used to do this all the time, watch this. You see right there, you see it's stiff right there between the finger, uh, this finger and right there where the index finger begins. You know, my thumb is still curved. If you're stiff over here, you're not going to get a good spiccato. So I had to learn how to relax here. Very, very important. So all five fingers have to be loose. You have to have a very light bow hold and the thumb has to be extremely supportive 
of the hand. This is the foundation that I was working on a lot. And with the Dunis exercises, my finger flexibility improved so much. If you would like to work on developing natural finger flexibility, I did make a couple videos with a bunch of exercises, which I'm going to link down in the description below so you can check them out. And they are progressive exercises and actually they're great for leading you step by step to be ready to play spiccato. Now, you might have seen, you know, maybe in a video somewhere or in a concert that when somebody's playing spiccato, you notice that their fingers are moving a little bit or their wrist is moving a little bit, right? So just be aware, and this is really important, that this movement that you see is not done on purpose, okay? So the hand is simply reacting to the natural bounce of the ball, you know, kind of the same way as, you know, if you imagine somebody jumping on a trampoline, right? A lot of the rebound happens um, because of the way the trampoline is made up. And actually the bow is, you can think of it like a little trampoline for the hand, but in this case, the fingers, they're, they're glued to the stick, okay? You can think of it that way. Actually, the spiccato motion is not that different from detaché. And I actually introduce it to my students by first playing detaché in the air and then on the string. So if you practice detaché every day, I actually like to do this before I practice any spiccato. I always start with detaché and really focus on making sure that your down bows and up bows are even. Okay, and that uh, to make them even, you need a really good foundation here. If you can do that, then your spiccato will become more even. Because a lot of times when spiccato is uneven, it's because one of the bow strokes is stronger than the other. A lot of times that's the reason. There are other reasons as well, but we're not going to talk about it in this video. So you want to have all five fingers curved, relaxed, not too stiff. When I'm especially here, make sure this is relaxed. The thumb has to be very supportive, but also not too floppy because then it's really unstable. You still want stability, okay? So it's good to have the flexibility, but you also want stability at the same time. So once you have good stability and flexibility at once, then you're gonna achieve a really good spiccato. So yeah, keep those fingers light, distribute the weight among the fingers. Once you have that foundation down, then you can start experimenting with things like bow height, how much length you're using, whether you're using flat hair or tilted bow, um, contact point on, on, between the bridge and the fingerboard, things like that. Then you can start experimenting with those kind of things. It's going to be more reliable because if you already have a good foundation, then you can work on those other things. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck working on all the other elements and having to come back to this. And once you change this, everything else has to change too, right? Think of this as layers. The foundation is the base. All the other elements, bow speed, bow height, and everything, that's on top of that, okay? So the foundation is really important. I'll talk about some of those factors in a future video, but what you can do right now, if you want, is go ahead and try some of the progressive spiccato exercises in this video right over here. So thank you so much for watching, and if you found this video helpful, go ahead and share it with a friend or a colleague. Remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell, sign up for my newsletter below, and happy practicing!